Hey guys, this is Jim K and 4YCD and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So in our last video, we created this code plug for our DMR662 radio from Baofeng Tech. And there was a couple things that we skipped over that I didn't want to put into that other video because they're a little more complicated than just basic setup. And that video really was only to cover basic setup. So we want to, I want to jump through those today. The other features that I wanted to mention, and these are these are some of these are a little radio specific, but but they should be features available in in every radio. So the biggest one, and where I see a lot of confusion, is from something called receive groups. So what a receive group will do, and we're going to delete this one, and we'll start over with them. What a receive group will do is allow you to put multiple channels basically on one button so while that specific channel for example in this example is set to toge digital i could also add in um america link on another channel but i'm going to create a receive group that listens to america link while it's sitting on this particular channel so it allows me to monitor and talk on toge digital and monitor another talk group at the same time. Most radios will let you key up on that other talk group. If a call comes in, for example, on America Link, I, if I respond in a certain amount of time, the call will also go out on America Link. So that's what a receive group does. Older DMR radios kind of had to have receive groups to work. Um, this particular radio does not. More current ones, as far as I've ever seen, do not really require receive groups um, at all. And you can use them or not use them, but there's some uh, complexity with using them. So when we create a receive group, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call this test group. And I have uh, one group in here. All right. One group call is listed in here. So I would need to add another group call. To my receive group so now we have a test group well let's go add another receive group or another talk group rather so now we have two digital talk groups and these are groups these are not private calls these are group calls that's important so if we go back to our receive group call list and we click up our test group now you can see i can add another receive group in here so if i add in alabama link that receive group will be able to monitor toads digital and Alabama link. If I go back to my channel, and this is where it gets dodgy, and I come in here on Toads Digital, that specific channel, and I want to set a receive group on this, right here you can see I don't have one set. So I could set that to the test group I just made and save it. So what that means is that I'm going to be able to hear and talk on Toads Digital and at least hear. Alabama link on the same channel without changing channels on the radio. And I believe, and this is very radio specific, but I believe that if someone called on Alabama link and I key up fast enough or hit a certain key sequence on the radio, then I can respond to them and I will automatically talk on Alabama link as well. Now, I don't recommend doing this because it will confuse you what talk group you're on. If you do this and you say, oh, I want this channel to be Alabama link, but I want Toads Digital on there and I want America link and I want America RC and I want the Scotland talk group, you're going to have five or six talk groups on one channel. And you may get on there and have a QSO going on with somebody else may have a QSO going on rather. And they're just talking and talking and talking and you're not going to hear any traffic from your other group. So. It also just gets plain out confusing because you may not know what talk group they're actually coming in on with a particular QSO. So I do not recommend doing that. If you want to set up the possibility of doing it, then what I have done in the past when I started messing with DMR is I would create, so let's get rid of, let's get rid of Alabama link out of our talk group. And actually we'll rename this guy and we'll call this toads. And we'll say next, and then we'll create a new talk group, and we'll call this Alabama link. And then we'll just drop Alabama link in it. 
So then I have receive groups that only have one talk group assigned to them. You don't have to do this. This doesn't add any value at all. If your radio doesn't require receive groups, then there's no point in doing this. You can get real weird with this and it, it can get very confusing. So something to be aware of about that. You don't necessarily need to, to mess with it. And I would absolutely set up my radio without that now and not even use it unless there was unless I couldn't get it to work any other way. On. Key functions, this is on almost every DMR radio. So this is where I can go in and I can have a short key, a one key function to, to show me or do a specific thing. And this is in every DMR radio. And so you have a list of all the different functions that you can do uh, with any of these uh, function keys on this particular radio. So depending on your radio layout, <clears throat> you know, you may um, have a menu sequence you have to get to to change zones. So sending one of your short keys, your, your program keys on your radio to do a zone change would be a great idea. I have a Motorola uh, XTS 3000. Changing zones on it's a pain in the butt. So I actually literally have a function button to change zones on that Motorola. It's a P25 radio. It's a close cousin of DMR. It works the almost the exact same way. So that kind of thing follows through here. So you can set these keys to be any of the functions that you have. So, and that's, that's common to every radio. How many function keys you have depends on your radio. And that gets to be very radio specific about how that works. And I don't want to try and go into that for this particular radio because you may not have this radio. Digital contact list. I, I briefly mentioned this and I'm not going to get into the deets of it right now, <clears throat> but I can download. We did talk about it the other day in the other video. I can download any or all of the worldwide DMR contact list, and then I can load them all in my radio or up to 200,000 in this particular radio. So when KM9G calls me, my radio will show Steve McGrain KM9G instead of 3175643 or whatever Steve's DMR ID is. So I'll know a name. And this is something that you may want to update on a semi-regular basis as new radios get added to the DMR database. <clears throat> right now, this radio will hold all U.S., Canadian, U.K., and Australian operators and other countries, but I know I can get all of all of the uh, United Kingdom, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, United States, Canada in here easily. So that's what those digital contacts are. Now, the last thing that I want to go through is some of the functions here and what these are. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. These hold times are how long the radio is going to stay listening or locked on to the last contact after they unkey. So this comes into play if you're doing something like I talked about earlier, where you have multiple talk groups in a receive group, and this is how long it'll stay locked in to a specific um, talk group or receive group. Same for private calls, um, some other hold times for um, manual dialing. Um, I don't know what those two are. Those are probably radio specific things. Um, there's some other DMR functions that are not available on amateur radios. The radio will support it, but amateur radio does not support it. Um, <clears throat> the DMR standard allows you to have radios that can be remote operated. So you can kick a remote radio into monitor mode, turn it on, turn it off, um, so on and so forth. And that's what this little batch of things are right here. Um, you can have monitoring, and this is something to set on a function key where you can uh, set a function key to do digital monitoring on a specific color code. So if you don't have or don't know the color code, you can turn this on. And if, for example, if you're on a local repeater and you don't know that repeater's color code or its um, um, digital monitor ID, then you can monitor anyone and you could hear them all um, all the time based on some other settings. So that's kind of what that does. Pretty cool. Um, DMR radios will send SMS messages, so that's what um, this stuff is for here. In any case, that's all I've got for this video. Guys, if you would give me a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and make sure and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new content. 
Thanks a lot, y'all. Have a good one. 73.